let's start off with this one right here in the middle. I'm just going to change the order of these. Okay. I haven't worked that if you can check it with multiplication and see if you've gotten it right. This one, hopefully you caught that you don't have to go to 45. You can stop right at the 4. How many 4s can we get out of 4? Just 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. Now we're ready to bring down the 5. This feels like yesterday's problem. How many 4s can we get out of 5? Just 1. Pretty simple. And how many 4s can we get out of 12? Three. So that one was a lot faster than some of our other ones. 113. I'm just going to squish this in here times four. Yep. That's it. Okay. All right. I want you to take a second and I want you to compare these two. We could say fractions, but we're going to be more specific. Compare those two mixed numbers. Okay, so I see a few blank stairs. Like, I'm not sure how to start this. How many of you were not quite sure, at least at first, how to start this? Okay. And yet, we did this over and over and over again, didn't we? A while back. Okay. Let's talk about this for a second, because we don't want to forget all this stuff. We've worked way too hard to forget what we've worked on. All right, what are a few things about this problem we need to know? First of all, look at the whole numbers. What what are they? Yeah. The denominator one? No, the whole numbers. Look at the whole numbers. What are they? They're not the same. I mean, they're the same. They're the same. So because they're the same, I can ignore them. And just look at the fraction piece. Okay. If I look at the fraction piece, I've got three-fifths. And four tenths. Because see, this is the thing. If this was like a three over here and this was still a two, this one automatically would be bigger. Boom. Because they're the same, I'm just going to look at that because they've both gone to the number two, like on the number line. You know, one, two. They're, they've both gotten to two. 
which one went a little bit further with its fraction here. Okay, now look at those two. They have different denominators. What are some ways we could compare? Yes, we could draw a tape diagram. Yes, we could draw a number line, but we don't have to even go that far. What are some ways that you've thought about this? Yeah. You can do the heart method. Uh, you could definitely do one of those methods. You could do heart or seal it and hide it. Anybody do those? I hope you didn't try that with that whole number still sitting there. You, if you were, if you left the whole number there, you would have need to, needed to have changed it into an um, improper fraction. Fraction with mad. Did anybody do that? And that was fine if you wanted to do that. Okay. So, heart method, seal it and hide it. Who who did something else? What'd you do? Okay. What do you know about three fifths? a little bit bigger than one half. And what about four tenths? Small, a little smaller than one half. So you could have done it that way. All right, look at the denominator. Five and ten. Is there a way to change just one of them into the other denominator? Yeah, what could you have done? You could multiply two times five. Okay, I could have just multiplied this side by two and gotten an equivalent fraction of six tenths because then they're both tenths and and we know it's way easier when you know both of the denominators are the same it's even easier when both of the numerators are the same anybody do something even different than all of that okay you can definitely see this way six tenths is larger with the reasoning way that Will mentioned, we know that three-fifths is just slightly bigger than half. This is less than half, so we knew that was bigger, you know, that way too. Mad, if you'd have done mad on both sides, that would have, ta you know, taken a little bit longer, but you definitely could have done it that way. Okay. All right, we don't want to forget what to do. We're, go we're going to see this kind of problem a whole lot for even years to come, so... Okay, uh, I think we got some practice with that, or a lot of practice with that lately, so we're not going to go there. All right, so what we're doing today is way different than what we've done this week. We're going to read a reading passage in that. No, I'm kidding. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Look at you. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You know, just don't question the board. It's going to do its own thing. Just learn not to question it. Okay, so what are we doing today? I've written over here. Uh, for some reason, my little sign got walked away. Um, but we're working on line plots, and you may remember what that is. You may not remember what that is. Go ahead to the top on your marker because we won't need it for a while. Um, yeah, just leave it in the corner because we may pull it out in just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so how do line plots work? When I say line plots, does anything at all come to mind? What do you think of? Like a number line? Okay. There is something with line plots that looks similar to a, n a number line. Anything else? You know, what is it used for? What does it look like? What is it? Anybody have any ideas? Like if you saw one on a page, a line plot, would you know that's what it was? No. <laughs> Except for the fact that Charlotte said they have something in there that looks like a number line, and I agree it does. Okay. If I drew this, and I'm, I'm really kind of fishing right now. What I mean by that is I'm, I'm trying to figure out what we might already know. So it is a number line? Let's just listen for a little bit. Um, now, the, the line that goes with the line plot is not always the same. It could be divided up differently, okay, <clears throat> depending on what we're making a line plot, line plot uh, about. But, okay, so what have I cut this into? Can you all count those? See if I did it right. 
Yeah, it should be in the eighths. Now, I could have cut it in thirds, sixths, fifths. I mean, it, it doesn't matter because um, I wanted to cut it into something that goes along with what we're talking about. Okay. So if I labeled this, and, and there is labeling involved with a line plot. Okay. And then if I started asking questions like, you know, I know we use this as an example a lot, but let's just use it one more time. We had pizza, and several of you ate three-eighths of your pizza. Let's say four of you ate three-eighths of your pizza. Let's say there were two of you that ate five-eighths of your pizza. Somebody, two of you ate the whole thing. Somebody wasn't very hungry and they just ate one eighth. A couple of you wanted just half of it. Does that look a little more familiar? Okay. That is something you've seen before? Okay. When you see this, it's very, very similar to a what? Number line. No. Okay. It has a number line with it. It's very, very similar to a? Yeah, a graph, a bar graph. Okay, because we can see, you know, the of course the one with the tallest column of x's is the one that has the most, right? You know, that kind of thing. Um, we can use this to get a lot of information. Yeah. Today we're going to see line plots. What do you want to say, Charlie? We did, we did like, we got this big piece of paper in third grade and we made a line plot and we had like a subject about it. And we said, oh, yes. Sometimes we have this on track. Right, and so who was, yeah, who was your class? Um, Miss Daniel. I went to Sarah. And so maybe Miss Sarah did it too? Okay. Um, that's what I figured. I wanted to make sure that you at least had seen this before, and I think you have. So we're just going to work with them for um, a day or two. We're probably going to carry it into Monday a little bit also. So today is just kind of getting the basics down. A line plot. All right, read that for us. Okay, if you want to read that for us. A line plot is data on a number line where from x to n and how many times this number is repeated. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I had asked all of you to write on a piece of paper how much of that pizza you had eaten, and yes, we're pretending about the pizza. Okay. Um, and, you know, I could look at this. If everybody's data information was up here, I could look at this and go, oh, okay, four people ate three-eighths of their pizza, because there's four X's. Two people ate five-eighths. You know, I could use this for a source of information to answer questions. Okay. Today, let's see what I did with it. Workbook, where'd you go? No, there's a lot of teachers down in the back. These are all teachers down in the back. There it is. I know it's usually sitting there, there, or here. Let me just show you what we're headed towards is in the way that they, our book is wanting us to handle this. On one page, they're going to give us the information. Now look at, this is a chart with information. It's not on a line plot yet, is it? It's in a chart. Now you can take this information and make a line plot with it. But look at the back page. Okay. This is what they want us to get to. This almost looks like word problems, but all this is is questions using this to answer it. So once we get our line plot made, then we have our tool to answer these questions. Sometimes the question might be asking you to add some of these fractions up. It might be asking you to subtract some of these fractions. It might be asking you to multiply some of these fractions. If they asked you how much pizza was eaten by the people that ate three-eighths of their pizza? 
Now, how much is all of this? Well, I would do four times three eighths because we got three eighths four times, don't we? You see that? How much more pizza did this person eat than this person? What are we going to do there? We're going to subtract. We're going to subtract one eighth from five eighths. Okay. How much pizza did the whole class eat together? Yeah, that kind of question might happen. Well, you might want to do a little multiplying first. Okay. You might want to multiply these and get one number and multiply these to get one number and then add all of them together. So it's those kinds of questions we're going to get to. Um, so today we're going to work on kind of building a line plot. We're going to do a lot of this together today. Like I said, we're going to do some more stuff with line plots on Monday uh, and start kind of working a little bit on our own at times too, but, but we'll do a lot together. So if you're not real, real comfortable with this at first, don't worry about it. <clears throat> okay, so I just drew this up here as an example. We're going to start off though building a line plot together. So that'll come in just a minute. So if you would just right now put your name at the top of this. And we're going to just kind of walk through this together today. Put the tops on your markers. We don't need those right now. something like this together but today we are So right now you should have two things. Did I give you one? Okay. Alright, so you should have a card that has a paper clip on it. And you should also have this right here. I don't want to miss anybody. I know I do that sometimes. Alright, um, this is what we're going to walk through together. Okay, don't draw anything on your paper clip card, please. Okay, I do need your name on this. I need nothing written on this. Okay. At least, at least right now. All right, so look at your paper clip card. You're going to be working with that for a second. Okay. All right, some of the number lines that are underneath your paper clip, they're different. Some of yours are divided into maybe eighths. Some of them are divided into fourths. Some of them are divided into halves. Okay. So if we've got all these different sizes, how can we compare them? How can we put them all together? Well, we've got halves. We've got fourths. And we've got eighths. Those are all, I wrote those as denominators. That's why that line is on top of them. We've got halves, we've got fourths, we've got eighths. Could those three different numbers go together? Yeah. They're kind of a fact family, so we're going to figure out how they go together. Okay? All right. So what you're going to need to do first is decide how long your paper clip is. Because everybody's is different. We've got little bitty ones in the room. We've got really long ones in the room. Okay? So um, that is the only thing that you're going to write on there. How are you going to figure out how long your paper clip is? Okay. Yeah. You can take the pencil and you can put it in the corner and you can 
Okay, well, we're actually going to create a fraction. Okay. So how are we how are we going to do this? Yes. All right, so you're going to use your number line that the paperclip is on top of to measure your paperclip. Okay? First of all, we'll just said we need to know the denominator. Well, how many pieces is your number line cut in? Everybody's is different. So count the pieces if you haven't already. That's your denominator. Okay. So if this was my card right here, and I had a number line and a paper clip up above it. How many pieces is my number line cut into? Four. Okay, so how many pieces long is my paper clip? Yeah. Two. Two. Okay, that's what I need you to do right now. And yes, you can write that fraction on your card. How many pieces long is your number line? That's your denominator. How many pieces long is your paper clip? That's your numerator. You should have a fraction looking at you right now. Making sure we're looking at this the, the same way. So look at the uh, number line that is on your page. This one right here. Okay? This one. Not the card. Now we're looking here. Alright, how many pieces is this cut into? <clears throat> this is cut into eight pieces. Heard that said. Okay. What I want you to do is to label this. Okay? We've got zero. We've got one. So underneath, not on top, underneath, I want you to label it with the fractions that go with it. We've got one eighth, we've got two eighths, and so on. Because that is fixing to become a tool that we're going to work with. Okay. 
I'm drawing this over here today because in a little bit when we get to answering some questions, we're going to need that workspace right there. So, I, this might not be the best as far as everybody seeing it really great, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay. So, I'll leave this here for a little bit, as long as I can. This is what you should have on your paper. All right, we're going to take a minute and we're going to create a line plot so that we can use it to answer the questions that are on the bottom of the page. We're not ready to answer those yet because we need information. We don't have any data yet. We have a number line. That's it. We don't have any data. The data is where the X's come in. Okay. So what we're going to do, you have a marker, correct? Okay. So in just a minute, you're going to bring your own marker with you so we're not all sharing one. And you're going to come and put an X where you need to put it. You know exactly right now where to put it because you have a fraction in front of you. All right, what problems do you see that we might have? Some of you are not going to have any problem at all. And some of you are going to have a little bit more problem putting your fraction on the board. Okay, look at your fraction you just wrote. On your card. You know, can't can't you see the matching fraction on the board? Yeah. Some of you can, but some of you can't at all. Some of your fractions are not up there. But Remember a long time ago when we did this thing called creating an equal fraction? We yes. multiplied or divided the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Here is where it comes in handy. If you have an, a fraction looking at you that has fourths or halves, your fraction's not up here. But can you create an equivalent fraction? Yeah. If your fraction right now has fourths, what can you multiply your fraction by to get eighths? Yeah, two. by two. The numerator and the denominator. If your fraction has halves, what are you going to have to multiply by? If you have two as the denominator, what are you going to have to multiply by to get to eight? Four. Four. Okay. All right, so right now, on your card that has a fraction there, I want you, if it's not already in eighths, he gauges it, he's good. But if yours is not already in eighths, I want you to put beside it equals, and you're going to create an equivalent fraction right now. Okay? If you have fourths, you're going to be busy right now writing an equivalent fraction. Okay. How are you going to make an equivalent fraction? What are you going to multiply by? Make eight. Guys, if you have fourths, I had fourths right here, right? So my two fourths, I want to make it eight. So you need to write that. You need to write that. I want it to be eight. What did I multiply by to get there? Two. two. So multiply this by two also and create your new numerator. Now I want to see that we all have an ace. Okay. Some of you, like I said, were already there. Okay. We have an ace already. We have a. There you go. You're good to go.
There. <clears throat> Okie doke. Now, one more thing, because line plots, if you're not careful, can get messy. Here's an example of one. I'm going to show you this. Okay. Do you see all the X's that were the first one? They're all at about the same height, about. The X's that were second are about at the same height. We don't need to have this. Oh man, that six eights had the most because it goes highest. <laughs> yep, that's it. Oh, you see the problem though? Okay. All that big X's is the name of the game, then you know, let's do that, okay? My X is bigger than theirs, uh -huh. you know. It's not about that, it's about almost making them the same size so that you can look at it and easily know. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know how you look at a bar graph and you don't even have to count, you can just look at it and go, Oh, that, that, whatever that is, has the most, and that other thing that's way down here has the the smallest number. Okay. I thought two eights. <clears throat> two eights. So this is what we don't want. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna try to be neater over here. Okay. So let me do this. I'm just gonna call you a row at a time. I think that might be simplest because more than one of you can get up there at a time unless you need the exact same fraction. If you need the exact same fraction, you're gonna have to wait for whoever um, up there. Okay. Now I would rather let you do this. You're going to have to show me how neat they can be. Okay? All right, so I'm going to start with you guys right here. Go on up and put an X where your fraction is. Don't need it to be real big. But I don't need it to be microscopically small either. That's too small anyway. Yeah, make it just a little bit bigger than that. I can barely see that. All right, Bailey's got a good size. Okay? Okay, those are close. You're not going to be perfectly, you know, 100% even, but, but we're close. All right, Isabella and Jayla, go put an X. Now, if yours is the same as one of theirs, you're going to have to go up above it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Jayla, make it just a tiny bit bigger, okay? All right, you guys are going to head up and put your... X, where your fraction is. All right, looks good so far. Three eighths is in the lane. I'll be asking you, Rach. All right. Let's see. Okay. All right, so Gage and Valerie, go ahead and put your X where your fraction is. Created, did the two eighths X's and jumped up that little bit. You've made it look as tall as four X's when it's only three. Do you see that? So we're going to have to be careful about that. All right, last row over here. All 
My fraction's open. <laughs> yes! Nice. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are good axes. They're just a little higher than I just, I want us to visually see this. So I'm going to, I'm going to, they're both this color. So let's do this. I still made it almost that tall, didn't I? Okay. Now, like I said, I'm sorry it's not on the big board, but I want to use that space to answer our questions. Okay. So now we have a line plot. We have a number line that gives us data. And I can use this to answer questions. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Now, sometimes you're going to be given the data. Or you might even be given the whole line plot might be done for you. And all you have to do is answer the questions about the X's. it. Okay. Well, you're going to answer the questions sometimes about the X's. Okay. So I'm going to clear this off. And we're going to work together to answer these questions at the bottom. So let's read question three. Um, Will, would you read question three for us? If you were to line up all of your paper clips in a row, what would the total number be? Okay, now when they say that, they mean all of this. Okay, there are 16 of you in here. They're talking about all 16. If we were to take all of these different size paper clips and line them up end to end, how long would it be? What are we going to have to do here? Add what? All of them up. All of them up. Now, what did you just say? Yeah, I thought I heard the word multiply in there somewhere. Okay. Okay. What do you mean by that? Okay, now, look, we could go 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 2 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 6 eighths plus 6, okay. But a quicker way to do this would be to, where there's more than one X, multiply those, and then we can take all of those answers and add them together, Okay. So, how many two eighths do we have? Okay, you're fixing to work on your board. There's not a lot of space right here for you to do that. So, pull your whiteboard in front of you. And that's where that's going to be our workspace. Okay. There are three two eighths. What can that look like? Three times what? Three. No two. Times. Three times two eighths. Okay. All right. We learned yesterday how quick this can be. Yeah. Three times two. Three times two. So what's our final answer? Six eighths. Six eighths. Now let me let me time out right here. Every time, just about, we did this yesterday, we had to stop and change it back to a mixed number. We've got a lot of work to do. Let's let's. Do all the adding and multiplying, and at the very end, if we need to change it into a mixed number, we'll do it. So right now, we might have a, a big improper fraction. That's okay. So we've got six eighths. Where could we put that? Let's see. I'm just going to tuck that up here at the top of my board, so I know that I'm going to add that to something. Okay, so I don't need this anymore. I'm going to put all my answers up here so I know to add them together. All right, what's the next one going to be? There are four X's right here above three eighths. So what are we going to have? Four times three eighths. This is why we learned multiplying fractions before we did this. Four times three eighths. Okay, somebody tell me what that is going to equal. Just know what? Twelve eighths. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to leave that as 12 eighths. I know it's improper, but I don't want to have to change into a mixed number a bunch of times. Okay, so we're done with that one. This really, it, you might look at this and go, this is going to take forever. It really might not take quite as long as you're 
afraid of. We've got two x's above four eighths. So what is our multiplication problem? Two times four eighths. So that's your next problem. Okay. All right. What's that going to equal? Eight eighths. Ooh. Any number over so I won't make you do it right now. Okay. Eight eighths. I know you're sad about that. All right, and right now, look, we've only got two left to do, and one of them we don't have to multiply at all because there's only one x there. How many x's are above the six eighths? Martin, you're close. Can you see that? Above six eighths? Yeah. Six. Okay. So, Alexander, what would our math problem be here? Six what? Six times six eighths. All right. What's the answer going to be there? Gage? Thirty-six eighths. Yeah, thirty-six eighths. And you might be itching to do a number bond. Not yet. Okay. It's kind of nice not to have to do the number bond for a little while. What are we going to add next? There's only one x. Do I really have to do one times seven eight? No. What am I going to do? Seven eighths is what it is. I'm just going to add seven eight. Now, we have a long addition problem, but it's not too bad. We're going to have to add six and twelve and eight and thirty six and seven. Now, if you want to do it all at once, fine. If you want to break it down into little pieces, what is 6 plus 12? What is 8 and 36? Well, that's going to need some... So I'm not going to add 8 and 36. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that 36 and put it right there. And what is 8 and 7? 15. Okay, so I'm done with this. I'm going to add these three numbers. You add those three numbers. Eight and six and five. What is that total? Yeah, six to one. Okay. Eight and six and five. What is that total? Oh, it's not nineteen. Okay. Fourteen plus five more is nineteen. Put the nine, carry the one, and then you are right. You got one, two, three plus three is six. Okay. Sixty-nine. We're done. That's the answer. Sixty-nine. No. No. 69 what? Eights. Eights. Okay, so we have 69 eights. What have we got to do with that? Make a number. Make a number ball. Okay. Now, that number is not too terribly large. You could do the number bond and pull those numbers out. Or, I'm going to show you another option. You see, we know that 8 times 8 is 64, right? And then there would be 5 left. That's not too bad. Eight and five eighths. What if this number was really large like yesterday? You could do sixty nine divided by eight. Okay. If there's a number really, really large, we could do that. All right, but we're good. We've got eight and five eighths. Now, what was the question again? If you were to line up all your paper clips in a row, what would be the total length? So on that first blank, eight and five eighths. Okay. Make sure you've written that in on the worksheet. Write the answer. Eight and five 
Huh? Yeah, you can erase your board. That's just our workspace, like our scratch paper or something. Now, I think that was one of the longer questions. Every question is not going to take you that long. What is the next, Bailey? What's the next question say? Number four. And that, that I N means inches. We haven't really talked about measurement yet, but they're talking about inches. How many were three fourths long? I don't know, because like everything's an eighth. What do we do? What 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 do we do? What do we do? For real. They want to know how many were three fourths long. And all of my data is in eighths. What do I do? How can we go from four to eight? Thank you. Okay. We've done this before. So what is our fraction going to be that we're really looking for? Ah, whew, now I don't feel so scared. Okay. Go to the 6 8 mark. Go to the 6 8 6 8 mark. How many X's are there? Six. Okay. So there's your answer. How many paper clips were three fourths inches long? Six. So I'm going to come over here to our handy dandy line plot. So I don't have to do that again. I'm going to write three fourths. I'm going to make myself some notes because if I know that that's three fourths right there, maybe that'll help me with another question. I don't know. Might not. All right, Kayla, read number five. How many paper clips were a half inch long? Okay, half. That's pretty. That's easy to find, isn't it? What is half when it comes to eighths? What is half when when we have eight? How, what is half? Four eighths is half. I'm gonna write one half under there. How many are there? How many X's are there? Two. Two. So there's your answer. That's your answer for number five. Oh boy, here's one that had that word total. What was the total length? I'm on number six. The total length of the one fourth inch paper clips. It's in fourths again. Stop me if you see it. I was about to write on the board with that. Okay. That would have been bad. Yeah, it would have. So if I've got, if they're asking me about one fourth of an inch and I need to know what it is in eighths, let's change that. What's it going to be? How did I get from four to eight? Times two. Times two. Now, please don't sit there and not pay attention. Miss Wendy's doing all the work for us. I don't really have to listen. Because, oh, yes, you're fixing to do one of these in a little bit. Okay. So, please stay with me so you know how to handle these kinds of questions. All right. So, we're looking for two eighths. All right. Who's been too quiet today? Brandon, how many X's are above two eighths over there? Three. Three. Okay. So there's our answer. Oh, no, it isn't. Look at the question again. Everybody, let's read question six together. What, what was, was the total length of all the one-fourth inch paper clips? Okay. Total length. I really didn't have to do this yet, but I did. All right, there are three of them over there. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. There's three of them. What is that going to equal? Or I could have done three times one fourth. That's going to be three fourths. So I'm sorry. That that is our answer. I wasn't paying attention to the question. See how that can mess you up? All right, 
Um, Mason, would you read number seven for us? Okay. So they've left it as eights. What's the total length? This is the hardest question on the whole page. What's the total length of all the five eighths inch paper clips, Will? Zero. That was so hard. It was. It was tough. Sweat. Okay. Now, if I had handed out all of the cards because I had this many left, we might have had a different answer there. Because there might have been, uh, was it five eighths? There might have been five eighths length, you know, still in the, in the uh, stack right here. So I hope this has helped you see how the line plot works. Okay, we have data that we get somehow. This was about paper clips, but you can have a line plot about anything. Anything. Okay. We created our line plot on our number line. Then we used it to answer questions. And when we did that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and tell you in fourth grade with line plots. They have fractions on them most of the time. And when you answer the questions, you're either going to be adding, subtracting, or multiplying those fractions. Okay? It's just using what we've done over the last few days. Okay? All right, so that took a little bit. I know. Why don't we... Let's take our break, and when we come back, we're going to do one that's in our workbook. We may start it together and finish it on our own. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, hold on. Okay. The next one is the X. Uh, this can go in your binder. Um, we've written on the cards. This you can either put this in the trash or take this. I'm not going to reuse those if you're writing on them. Please do not throw it on the floor. Alright, go ahead and line that up. Back it up, guys. We're forgetting to do that.